<laughs> you can probably see them from your front porch out on their park there. That's what I think. Okay. Okay. Well, it's four o'clock, so we'll start our meeting. I'll call the uh, Planning Commission Comprehensive Plan Update Work Session Number Fourteen to order. Would call the roll, please. Mr. Granger. Here. Mr. Boswell. Here. Mr. Clee. Ms. McBeth. Here. Mr. Edwards. Mr. Schaller. Here. Mr. Rogers. Here. Okay, so today we're going to be reviewing Chapter 14, um, as you're seeing that for the second time, and then Chapter 9 for the first time. So, Carolyn? So what I did is, after our last meeting, I went and updated uh, sections, and I highlighted them in red in your packet as to uh, the changes I thought were necessary based on, based on our discussion. So what I did in my PowerPoint is I copied each page and put it in the PowerPoint so we could review them. And if there are any comments, we could note that um, and then move on. I thought that would be the easiest way to do it. So page 4-1, I didn't, we didn't have any comments last time. Do we have any comments from the commission on this page? On 4-2, I added quite a lot. Uh, Jeff Clee and Andy helped with some of the wording. Pittsburgh uh, importance began to diminish after the capital was moved to Richmond in 1780. So that section I modified. I also added the section a special challenge for historic preservation because that was a discussion we had last time about the importance of the Architectural Review Board in maintaining the historic character of the city. So I added that red section that says a special challenge for historic preservation is to balance the need for healthy growth with the character of our older neighborhoods. These may, these may be grand or modestly scaled, but the range of the city's historic neighborhoods represent the complete scope of our community's history and character. So that was something I added based on the discussion. And then I went in and I changed the next section quite a bit went from paragraphs and went to bullet points and described disorder and, and eras, 10, 20 years of how the city developed. And that, I did it in bullet points because I thought it was easier to read. So if you have any concerns or questions or changes on that page. Carolyn, the last uh, bullet point mentions the 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, some of those subdivisions were still being developed into the 2000s just for, uh, you it's know. Really, I, I looked at it when it first started the developing. beginning? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, just I mean, the reverse case in point is that where I live says in the late 50s and 60s, but my house was built in the 30s. Right. Hmm. So, I mean, you have a lot of things that took a lot of time to come build. in later. Yeah. I didn't know if we wanted to add a bullet for the 2000 and 2010. I can. And look up those neighborhoods if you think. That's important. My guess is, to be honest with you, uh, someone interrupted me and I forgot to add that in there. <laughs> I think it makes sense to, yeah. to add it just for consistency with yep. what you've already done. Yeah. So I'll, add, I'll add those neighborhoods. Then I just modified some of the text on this page, as, as you can see. I had it, we took it the, in the 1950s, and then in the next paragraph, with some help I had, Williamsburg has taken care with architectural <coughs> design since its founding. And we changed model to designs for Gov Governor Nicholson's for the colonial capital, capital and the powder magazine and set a high standard that has been emulated by the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation in its restoration efforts. That was, changes I made to that page based on comments. Uh, this page, it didn't have any comments. It's basically describing the architectural preservation district. No comments. Same thing with the corridor protection districts. Describing them. Architectural history and inventory, the guidelines did add the most restrict, restrictive guidelines are in the AP1 district, 
which contain the Colonial Williamsburg Historic Area Merchant Square areas adjacent to the historic area. So that was to better define that. Just some wordsmithing on the archeolo archaeological preservation in the first paragraph. We did add the Civil War resources because we discussed that at our last meeting and I tried to capture that in this paragraph. Question on the last sentence um, uh, it says this is detailed. Is it what's uh, this proposal? Maybe just for just to make it clear, is is that what that's referring to? Okay. Uh, this is proposed to convert the gravel portion, so this this proposal is detailed. Entrance quarters didn't change anything as far as the the list. What I did change is based on our last meeting. After trying to separate it a little better, I put each quarter on its own page. <clears throat> after the first intro introduction part, and I started to add some pictures, uh, like Richmond Road. So I started putting them on each page because I thought it made it easier to read, and it's nice to put some pictures for each quarter in that section. Well, I, I, I thought this layout was quite thoughtful, although I was a little surprised when I first looked at it how um, either rural some of the pictures were and or like <laughs> Richmond Road has not a car on it. <laughs> you know? So yep. she sat three hours waiting. Yeah. I know. It's just like, thanks. There is a bunch more pictures I have to get. These were some we had in the file. Sure. Um, I especially need some on uh, Capitol Landing Road, York Street, Monticello Avenue. Right. And getting those as a Some of them are very scenic, but I'm thinking right. when I think of that street, yeah. that's not the picture that I nope. think of. And nope. I guess just in terms of being a it's a, it's a living document since it will be sitting on the website, but as a document to look at, if someone with an economic development, I was looking at our, what is called our predominant commercial corridor, and there's not a single car on it. Actually, <laughs> nope. cars aren't that pretty, but that I think is actually not the right message to, to yep. have there. <laughs> I'll get cars. We just can't stand in the middle of the street. No, no. <laughs> Crib something from the Gazette or something. <laughs> in Monticello Avenue. Like I said, I need to get pictures and on I'm um, oh, sorry. Did you have this page or the previous? Yeah, page? well I was, we talked about the the sidewalk in front of PBK uh, or the mm -hmm. lack of a sidewalk and I wonder if we should uh, just add something about safety there because I think mm -hmm. we're, we're we're referencing it in other places but just kind of to be consistent. <clears throat> because they do walk in the bike path there. Also note, Carolyn, that in the long-term plan of the college, there is a proposed building to take the place of the more houses between Carey Street and the admissions building, more of a uh, wing, administrative wing of the college. So hopefully by the next comprehensive plan, it'll, it'll be there, be able to be included in the long-term plan. <coughs> Eventually that'll happen. Yeah, I added that section. These buildings should be renovated and preserved since they represent good examples of architecture and housing after World War I, which may provide housing for university faculty and staff. So that was just based on last <coughs> kinds of discussion. I think we sort of capture it. If you want to modify that, that's... Well, no, and it, it wouldn't take the position of those, but it would be where the campus center is. And so I think in pulling the staff out of those houses, they would be renovated and made a little bit okay. nicer. Well, and you show in the, in the next in section nine, the institutional section, you actually, I think, first illustration is that section of the master plan that shows this section of Jamestown. Right. And does that read, by the way? Sorry? Oh, that read? Oh, on that bicycle? That read, it's not. It sure <laughs> looks like him. <laughs> North Henry Street, right, 132? Henry Street. Second Street. I need to get better pictures on Second Street too because. Right. I mean, this is our 
you know, auto-oriented yep. commercial. <laughs> yep. But at least there are no power lines in it. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Yeah. Hey, I got some cars on Page Street, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Well, it'd be good to show some more recent development too, yep. like the um, um, what do you call it, where where Koshan is. That I forgot what that shopping center oh. is called. <clears throat> Velvet Shoe Street. Velvet Street. Street. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Lafayette Street. Carol, I, I could be wrong here. Was the demolition of Hotel Eight attached to the Midtown Row project? I, no. I okay. I thought it happened before. Okay. The city owns that piece of property. Right. We've purchased it, we have looking at it for potential redevelopment in the future, depending mm -hmm. on how that gets developed mm -hmm. and how we do the intersection of Richmond Road and Lafayette right. Street. When I read it, it sounded a bit as if we had demolished to make the to make the bid to Midtown Road more enticing, so there might be a way to rework that. And so it just sounds like that opens up more area in that area. That's why I put on here, for future development to enhance the new development. York Street, what I did add that you didn't see last time were recommendations. I'm trying, I thought about it and I added recommendations to the plan at each chapter as a way to make us think about those chapters and get our comments down on what we think our recommendations are because when we get down to the end of the plan, it's hard to remember what we discussed and were important to bring forward six and seven and eight months ago. So I just started a list that is not a list that it's here to start the discussion and want to tweak it, remove some, add some, feel free to do so. Yeah, and so in, in printing out a copy so I could mark this up, um, I did have a question about the recommendation of from six rooms to less than ten rooms versus mm -hmm. where the, I mean, the, the arguments that come before us um, have typically been to go for the select properties who can to like 10 rooms. So the I've less talked than to 10 the individuals and they say they want less than 10 and less than 10 is a category we have, we call an N. Okay. And, and especially in the LB sections on Richmond Road. <clears throat> so my thought was maybe it'll fit into an N category and okay. we could keep the existing B and B regulations. Got it. But also add an N to those Makes sense. I just wanted. To, I just was trying to clarify that. I knew there must be some reason of that. Yep. Um, and clearly, we've seen people talking about eight and nine. Those are numbers less than right. ten. And if this fits a different right. sort of building code category, then that's perfect. I guess. Right. Yeah. Building code calls it an end also. Well, we're and I've spoken with the individuals, and the individuals that are looking to increase it are looking to go to eight or nine rooms. While we're on that topic of uh, the bed and breakfast requirements, I wonder if it's practical uh, to consider uh, softening up or easing up some of the restrictions on events at a bed and breakfast. Because um, if they've gone to the trouble of putting in a commercial kitchen and, and they've got the adequate parking and they meet all those requirements, if they wanted to do a, a wine dinner on occasion or host a small wedding reception and stuff, I, I think they can do a wedding. <coughs> Um, with a permit, but I think about those uh, like a, a vintner's dinner or something that, that complements it so that uh, on a weekend where hard to get a reservation and somebody's already staying at the house, they can have a small dinner party and then go out and sit in the backyard and enjoy uh, the evening and then just walk upstairs to their bedroom. Um, I would think that that might be a nice thing to explore because there's a lot of infrastructure already there. Yeah, sure. And so, I mean, I think that with this, um, this fifth bullet point, the review of bed and breakfast requirements, I mean, every time that we have looked at these things, you know, once every five or so years, um, we've looked at them through the lens of not only desirable needs, but also what is that sweet spot in the middle of the Venn diagram of, you know, what are uses that they can do based on city codes around the board besides the building code, but also the requirements of the health department, if you start doing meals and all these things. And we've actually broadened that category. So I think that that's a great suggestion, but I think that that's probably the lens through which 
Carol, Carol, when you're thinking about looking at a general review, because obviously it will have been several years since we've done that before, and if there are more options, because it's only been legal in the past five or so years to do weddings. People were doing them, but it was not part of the code, and we were able to push back the code a little bit. So, um, so let's, yeah, I think that having that review and seeing where we can support the businesses will be a good thing. So I'll also modify more. that a little bit to incorporate reviewing regulations also. Right, 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 right. <clears throat> that also might uh, assist with the differentiation, if you will, between an Airbnb and an actual bed and breakfast. Mm -hmm. Because I wouldn't think that an Airbnb would be able to host a dinner in the evening or uh, anything like that, but a bed and breakfast like that. I had on there review the design guidelines. That's always a recommendation from the comp plan. Yeah. I just wanted to actually ask about that. Is that a recommendation or is that a requirement? In other words, is that is that more or less automatic? Is that automatic? I think it's important to have it in the comp plan. Yeah. Done it after every comp plan. Right. But I think it adds weight when the commission says yeah, I get well, it, absolutely. It, 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 I'm yeah. just wondering if it if it if we should maybe it's not up to us whether it should simply become part of this process, just the last thing that happens, um, or if it's a recommendation. In other words, having it be a recommendation makes it optional. It, should it be optional? Is what I'm asking. Uh, I, I see. I think, think I see that as a different thing. I mean, in, in in some ways, and I think maybe this is also a lens of how we should be thinking about this as we're you know going from drafts to var varnishing and then burnishing something <laughs> like that, that these recommendations become almost analogous to the GIOs for the city as, as a whole. That if we have these recommendations that come from us and go through the city council and it becomes a comp plan, then that gives us the point to say to the city manager that staff time needs to be devoted to doing this because this is one of the approved recommendations from the comp plan. So it actually provides that gravitas. Also, it feeds into the implementation chapter. Right, right, right. That's our last chapter, so the yeah. implementation yeah, chapter will say, okay, do it. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So, I mean, I think there, there are other, in looking at these two chapters now that we have recommendations, I was, I, I focused more on that than a lot of the redlining, because I, I knew a lot of heads had already gone into that, that that's where I think we really need to think about what, what do we actually need to add to those areas, that it folds into this work plan for the next couple. Obviously, when we have all these recommendations that have then been approved, part of the implementation plan, it's going to be hard to divert Carolyn's time to do something that we think, of, oh, we should have been doing this. <laughs> you know, it should have been part of this project. So are, they, are, you, are you okay with the signage? And I mean, that's something that's come up a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our gateway signage, mainly from the interstate, yeah. is over 10 years old now, so it's about time to look at that again. And then the welcome to Williamsburg signs, which are our entrance corridor signs. Look at those and see if they need to be updated or changed. Or added. Or added. I mean, like, quarter path entrance to the Harris, that doesn't have one. Right. And that, because that came online after those were put right. up around mm -hmm. town in different places. Is there an intentional difference between review and investigate and review, or is that just kind of variety? It's just. Everything else is just review. Usually you, usually you have someone look at it, they come up with a recommendation, staff reviews it, and then it comes forward as a work plan in someone's, some department. Usually Public Works is the one that's in charge of gateway signage. And then, of course, we always hear the, the signage requirements for downtown, and we're starting to look at that now, as a matter of fact, with a consultant on how to, how to do that. So. So this one seemed to be the one that was, was built around establishing signage. You said there was a consultant that's looking into it for the see if it's necessary in those areas. Carolyn? Maybe you want to say review and construct. Just so that it, it seems like you know establishing is the goal. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Review, review. We can have studies and reviews and conversations and hearings and meetings, and not get anything done. So. Um, I think that's a good idea to put in some more active language about implement. Whether that's another bullet or just a revision of one of these, I'm not sure. Okay. 
maybe just taking out determine, like, like you said, re review and construct, review and establish. This one. Anything else that you want to add? And these are specific to community character, right? Yes. So, yeah. Okay. Yes. That's all I have, then you can. Are there any other comments on Chapter 4 right now? Wanna, there's no open forum, but I, before you, I would build, build it. Good, good, okay, cool. Then we will roll to um, Chapter 9, which is our first review. Okay, since Andy wasn't here, he provided me some comments and what I did I took chapter nine and I highlighted in red just to start our discussion. <laughs> <laughs> See, it, you gather a lot of importance. When you That's right. So is what you have on screen different it, it from what we different, have on our yes. gizmo? Yes. Okay. What we have on screen, the only changes that are different are Andy's I highlighted in red also. So Andy thought, take the, the put Virginia's colonial government the, the colonial government, the Virginia <coughs> colonial government. Okay, right. cool. No worries. That made sense to me. Any comments on that page? Get, you, you scratch out the, right? I can yes. Barely, okay. So it's not the Virginia colonial yeah. Okay. Yeah. On this page, the commercial development, I added... Uh, Developments that have happened recently, based on the uh, so, so he had no comments in between page one and page seven. Is that what I'm seeing? Did it skip? It skipped on seven. seven. Went from one to seven. Okay, I couldn't imagine yeah. that he did <laughs> not. Have well, we lost two. <laughs> <laughs> and two is the best one because it had a beautiful map. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there were there were a couple of things. Let me just mention to you real quickly. It does this. I mean, I know this is carried over from the last time and not your work, but um, William and Mary is not actually the second oldest educational institution oh, in the go. country. Yeah, <laughs> because, because it's, a, it's, it's higher education, because Boston Latin even predates Harvard by a year, oh. so. There you go. Oh, yeah. There you so, go. yeah, so it, it needs a higher education. That's all. Where in the put? That's on the fourth oh. line of yeah, William and Mary? Yeah, the second oldest. First paragraph, uh, second oldest. Higher, second yeah, oldest. higher educational institution. Higher. Okay. Poor guys at Boston Latin. Right? They always <laughs> get forgotten. Boston, you forget about Boston Latin 1635. Yeah, I got permission from the college to use that map. I thought that map was really cool. It yeah. Outlined the, nice. outlined the old campus. Yep. Is that it for that page? Um, I, yeah, I think so. The, the one thing that's just worth mentioning here, because it recurs multiple times, is the, the count for enrollment. And I didn't sit down and try to make sure that the numbers were exactly the same each time. Um, but there, there's some point later on, where we'll get to it, it's just a few pages in, where the numbers seem to be calculated in a different way. Um, so I just wanted to sort of flag that here. Okay. These numbers will keep coming up, but... Um, yeah, I got the numbers from campus. Yeah. Our website is highly flawed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So on the physical improvements, I just basically added the information from uh, the PowerPoints they gave us when mm. back in February mm -hmm. for the updated information. I added one, two, and three into the one paragraph and took phase three of mm -hmm. ISC out of it. Uh, there was also the Smith McLaughlin Grandstand Stadium in 15, 16, it was right before I got there.
could there be a distinction there between construction? I mean, some of these are new construction, and several things are were actually renovations and additions. Uh, Tucker, Richmond, and Landrum. Tucker, Tyler, Richmond, Landrum. Could just put in that bullet since 2005, William Mary has completed construction or renovation uh, of something like yeah, perfect. just to make it clear. Yeah. Okay. And then, Carolyn, it, per it pertains to this slide, but it's on the next one. The Wren ramp, I believe, is, has been completed. Right. So I think construction is now done on that, or the renovation of the side of the Wren added to the. And I just took the ISC4 and just made it the text match the other page. And under planning issues, Andy recommended those changes instead of this makes making it University and the city work together to preserve very special character. Took out these, added a sentence why many college towns have given up on close in residential neighborhoods thought we need to soften that, so I want to thoughts on that. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I felt the same way. Uh, and there's a couple points at which the tone, I think, just sounded less cooperative. And this I, is from our last comp plan, so this is... Yeah. I just... Um, what about something like greatly values, greatly values the character, Williamsburg greatly values the character, or something, something like that? That's... Well, there's also that just it's the tone, but also the kind of um, uh, apocalyptic <laughs> quality. Sort of <laughs> while many while many mm -hmm. combative is a better way. It's a better word. While many towns have given up on, um, I, that just that seems extreme to me. I, I, I think that mischaracterizes even what's gone on in places where you know the relationship isn't so good. So. Um, and then surrender is sort of the same way. There's the, the kind of language of battle. Um, I think let's just make it positive, which is to say, um, Williams, the character and livability of historic neighborhoods close to campus um, is essential to the um, vitality of this community for all of its inhabitants. Therefore, you know, we're going to be careful some version of a sentence like that, which simply says, these are important and they're valuable to us. Um, we need to work with the campus, we need to work with the, the college to uh, ensure that it provides a, a good home for students while also a good home for um, uh, other residents. So I, I think we just, we don't need to turn it into a fight, mm -hmm. I guess is what I'm trying to say. And even if we feel some days like it's a fight, I think the more we characterize it as a fight, the more it will be a fight, right? I completely agree. Yeah. Wow. And I don't know that we need to reference what other towns are doing. I yeah, think, right. I would, I would delete that first clause completely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then the second, just, just start with Williamsburg and then come up with yeah. some language, you know, values the character and livability. I mean, that because that's true. I mean, everybody, okay. nobody, nobody's going to argue with that. I don't and think. maybe talks about trying to do things in harmony with the college. Well, I think we've got that already in the sentence yeah. above. Work, to, I mean, work together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Work on that. We can put that in the appendix. We can leave, leave the combative language and just put it in the appendix. So <laughs> <laughs> put it in the Twitter feed. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this, the previous sentence isn't quite so adversarial. Um, but it still is a little adversarial, so that the city does not wish to interfere with the university's ability to plan. Well, it simply doesn't matter whether well, we wish yeah, to interfere. Yeah, it can't. It can't. <laughs> uh, so I think um, that sentence too. I, I, I would. Uh, I think we want to maybe just adjust that so that it speaks to the quality of cooperation that we would like to see happen, um, rather than saying. I don't know. If I were if I were a cynic about what I thought the city's intentions were, and I read that sentence, I'd say mm, something's up here. So 
Was so I think that sense too. Was there, was there conversation about that last time around? Well, this is your first time you've seen this challenge. No, but this is carried over from the, nope. that, oh, this is all, this is brand new. Okay, okay. No, this was carried over from the last comp plan, so. Well, that's what I'm, that, yeah, that's what I presume, so, yeah. Sort of cool. on that same grain, and I'll let you, if you need to write and get your thoughts down, I can hold my comment for a second. But um, I'm wondering if within each of these subsections for William Mary and uh, Colonial Williamsburg, if instead of calling this little paragraph section planning issues, we should mm. call it cooperative planning goals or cooperative planning, something, like, something that Lovely. emphasizes yeah. the cooperation rather than the issues that might emerge. Yeah, no, that's lovely. Yeah. In a, in a prior meeting, I inquired about um, how the college plans its, its buildings and such, and if there's a committee where traditional residents from the community are engaged in in the planning and, and, and such of some of those buildings. Um, and, and that came to my mind after I looked at the proposed, uh, or I suppose the, the plans for the new Phi Beta Kappa Hall. Well, and I thought, wow, that's interesting. Um, and I think I remember hearing that there is such a committee, um, but I don't, I don't know much about that committee and how one gets involved with it and how open it is to the rest of the community. Um, and that's what comes to my mind in this uh, discussion about cooperative planning. And, and while it is true that the, the college, if the college owns the land, then the city doesn't get to dictate to them. But in a mutually beneficial relationship, neither party should really be dictating to the other. And so finding somewhere to uh, enhance the notion of dialogue with the planning between the college and the, and the traditional uh, residents is, I think, a really nice thing to try and incorporate in this. That up a little bit. I know when they did Barksterrell Field, there was petitions and all sorts of stuff. And um, you know, there's got to be an easier path. I'll work on that paragraph and see. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that's a tough one. I think we can work on, on that paragraph and any other um, you know, suggestions send to Carolyn, you know, offline and things like that. I mean, I found some typos that I don't need to yeah, work on doing those kinds of things. Um, right. But, I mean, with regard to your comments, Greg, it's like there are some working groups that have members of the community and or Typically, there's always a member of the Board of Visitors who's a local resident and they're on maybe the building committee or something like that, that this is a problem of um, like a principal agent issue or something like that, where the people are residents of the community and they have been selected to be part of this committee of the college, but they're not necessarily seeing themselves as a representative of the city. They're not appointed through city processes and thus reporting back to a city committee that they sit on. And so there's a disconnect between Yes, there's representation, but when you have a miscellaneous person who happens to live in the city who's been, you know, get, through networking of their own devices, get appointed to some of these, these things, they're not necessarily thinking of themselves as this representative of the city. Um, and so I think that that's, that's, having found this with different parts of my life before, I mean, part of that is educating the people who sit on committees that you actually, who, who you're actually trying to represent and that it would be nice to have some feedback from you because a lot of these meetings aren't open to the public or if they are open to the public, they're not public meetings and that there's never a public forum time for you to you can, you can sit and observe because it is a public institution, but it's not a public meeting that you can that's, that's offline for this one paragraph, but for us to think about how to, how to Well, maybe another way to, to go at this is there, there are issues that are of mutual, where the city's and the college's interests are aligned, and there are other places where they're not in alignment, but we'd like to get them in alignment. Um, with respect to land use, and you know, we've kind of drifted from talking about land use a little bit into architectural character and standards and that sort of thing, but kind of um, that can still come under land use. I think things like um, affordable housing 
um, affordable housing for staff for uh, both of these two institutions, which we've discussed, you know, uh, over the course of the last few months. Um, and wayfinding, uh, both of those things are places where I think we can find, easily find common ground. So maybe one way to approach this is to identify a couple places, and this is probably the document and the section of the document to do that, identify a couple of places where we can say quite clearly um, the city's interests and the college's interests are, are closely aligned. Let's, let's build in some mechanisms to um, uh, ensure that we're talking, right? Representatives, official representatives of city boards are talking to the right people at the college. Um, and then work from that out to other places where we can, um, maybe, we're, maybe our interests don't seem to be aligned, but we can use this, I'm losing, I'm losing the thread here, but we can use this um, format for um, having these discussions across these institutions to, to have them in other places where, where maybe we're not working so well together, but we know we need sort of lost track of what I was trying to say, yeah, I'm sorry. That makes perfect yeah. sense, and, and, and it seems like something in the in the recommendations, maybe adding a recommendation to oh, yeah. establish a liaison or, or yeah. a, a, a yeah. line of communication in some way along these, yeah, uh, that these would, mutual goals and interests yeah, that would with, do with it. both of the CW. Yeah, I mean, and this is the kind of thing where it's not something that we can make happen, but I've been with other organizations where we can work on trying to make something happen and frequently and actually yeah. get to this that, you know, yeah. by serendipity, the college will have public people added to these internal committees, and by default, one happens to be a local resident. Well, it may be that we can work with the college that, you know, they actually seek, you know, mm -hmm. more formal input from the appropriate, you know, city commission or board or city council nomination process or something like that mm -hmm. to fill some, you know, one seat on each of these other committees. Um, and it's very similar something we've done in-house that we now have official you know connectivity with like EDA and mm -hmm. I'm sitting on the tourism uh, fund mm -hmm. the development fund thing that you know we're sitting we're sort of a spider web of other you know committees and subcommittees assignments that we have um, that that can that can work and that that has happened at the college in inside the college system where it used to be that by serendipity that what some of these big committees were only you know, staffed out by long-term faculty, more mm -hmm. high, and like we need to have staff engaged on this too, mm -hmm. because I mean, they represent different bodies. So we've made it happen in-house, so it would not be an unusual ask, mm -hmm. you know, for to do that. Yeah, and I think starting with places where we know that we, uh, again, have mutual interests uh, to say, we have something to offer to this conversation. Let's, let's try to have it together in a more structured way than is happening right now. And I mean, even just thinking about the people that we have now and have had on this very body over the years, we have people who um, work for the college and yet not necessarily, are not necessarily representing the college's interests in any kind of official way. Um, uh, so maybe that's something that we can think about too, um, ways that members of this board could be more En enabled, empowered to represent the college in a more official capacity other than, well, I work there or I'm a student there and therefore, you know, here's my take on this. Uh, I think this could work, this could work both ways in a useful way. I don't know what that looks like, but I agree, maybe starting with a recommendation, trying to come up with what a recommendation would look like is a, is a good thing for this document. But that also, sorry, just to kind of tie it up a little bit, um, that speaks back to building in, um, re refining some of this document as it's written, some of this chapter in a way that makes it clear that we're after a cooperative relationship, that we're not trying to push back at things that we think are wrong, right? read on this page. Yeah, not much on that page other than taking a oh, so working together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Is this the page, the numbers you... Well, so this is just another one. So those numbers show up multiple times. Um, I did want to just talk about this one. Maybe what we need, actually, I think this is what we need, somewhere in here under housing and students, a little graph, a little chart that shows enrollment of undergraduates, enrollment of graduate students. And then since it seems to be broken down, I think it'd be useful to see how many undergraduates are on campus and how many grad students are on campus because it's not clear from the way that it's presented here what the proportion of undergrads versus grads is on campus. Uh, the way that it's written, I understood it to mean that some of those students who are on campus are actually uh, grad students. Yes. And I think that's a distinction worth um, noting. Um, and the other thing is there's, there's further in in housing, I think it's on the next page, it's not clear if the on-campus housing includes, I think it doesn't, or I just lost track, whether the on-campus housing numbers include Tribe Square and include One Tribe Place. Um, I'm sure they don't include Griffin Arms, right? But these other ones that the college has actually developed and are managed by on-campus housing, yes. are those treated as, are those counted in the on-campus numbers? Yes. Okay, so I just, I think that needs to be clear in this chart too. Because um, the basic question I think for, for coming to grips with, I don't want to say the problem of, of, camp, of off campus housing, but the situation of on campus housing is trying to get a sense for how many undergraduates are required to live off campus and then how many additional ones choose to live off campus. I think these are also some numbers that I think it would be useful to get a, a firmer handle on. Um, because the other number that's not in here, and I don't think it belongs in here, um, is the number of vacant beds right now on campus. So there's, there's another number in here that's how many students are actually able to live on campus and how many are actually living on campus, how many undergraduates. Because mm -hmm. uh, these just come up all the time. Every time we have a discussion about whether it's Midtown Row, whether it's uh, you know, neighborhood um, uh, neighborhood character concerns about concerns about um, student housing that isn't off campus that isn't going as well as we would like um, these kinds of uh, figures. I think we need to have in front of us as we as we have these conversations over the next five years. Uh, they will clearly continue. And I, I don't remember. Um whether this is a new policy that's being implemented this coming school year or the year after, but in light of the vacant beds, the um, residence life has changed, and maybe you know this, has, um, has changed the, the requirement that second year students also stay on campus. Yeah. yeah, it's a, yeah, the it's data a holistic change, here is correct, but because I checked that with college representatives, so it's the class of 2021 required to be on campus. So once once people once the students find nice housing off campus, it's very rare that they go. Yeah, right. And that's what that's supposed to address. They're they're really changing the whole uh, introduction experience to William Mary holistically. So it's called second year experience now, and it's yeah, right. you're required to live on campus. But there's also a number of programs you're still in and groups you'll still chat with about William Mary as a school. So that's this freshman class. I mean, class of 2023 20, is who comes next month, okay? This is this year's. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, under student housing, and, and it's probably uh, covered elsewhere, and it's just evading my mind right now, parking. Um, the, I wonder if there's an opportunity for us to mention that student parking. Um, beyond uh, as it exists right now. And maybe we've sufficiently covered that in another area, but we're talking about off-campus housing, and, and I think about an off-campus corral or something. I know, as I mentioned in here, they are in just about to finish up a, a parking study again. Once they get that, I think I can add something to this section to address the parking and what needs there are, but until Walker and the same uh, company that did our downtown parking is the same ones that did the William & Mary first study is doing an update of the study and it's supposed to be finished this summer. So. I think about James Blair Terrace 
where that used to be a long way away, but now we've got a high street in the middle and maybe there's mm -hmm. the possibility of a parking facility because we've got shuttles that run over there regularly now and interesting stuff in between. Um, whereas before it was a hassle and you had to take the old green machine school bus to get over there, but <laughs> now you yeah, it was, it was the have great world. options to get over there. And, <laughs> and so if we're, if we're gonna deal with student housing and those things, maybe dealing a little bit with off-campus parking, hmm. um, which can alleviate a lot of the, the city's downtown parking issues, might be worthy of tucking in there somewhere. Um, this is maybe another place where a, a chart would be useful um, rather than or in addition to the series of sentences about Tribe Square, Prince George Commons, City Lofts um, that showed us the number essentially, I mean for me to kind of get my head around this, what I'd like to know is how many undergraduates do we need to have find housing for off campus? What's that number? And then how many undergraduates do these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight projects uh, how many undergraduates do we anticipate those eight projects uh, being able to house? And we could kind of figure that out with a pencil and paper. But then, you know, the, the next number is how many, how many students um, need to be distributed or need to be housed elsewhere, right, in the community. Uh, and if there's some graduate students in the city lofts and these other places, um, that'd be nice to know too. But I think we, we sort of pretty much focus on, on undergraduates when we're thinking about student housing. I think that's right. Um, to do that, um, but graduate students are clearly another another factor in the mix. Um, but just you know, what are the what are the numbers? What are the raw numbers uh, that we uh, that all of this? Uh, we just need to see the math problem, I think. And and for m for me, seeing it as a graph would be really helpful, or a bar chart, or whatever, some kind of visual uh, summary of all this. I think would be. So, so Carol, with the list of apartments, quote unquote, adjacent to the university, um, some of these are getting sort of further down the road. Um, for one, so I mean, for me, City Lofts and Sterling Manor are both basically at the High Street area. Um, City Lofts, I mean, Sterling Manor is almost all students from what I hear from people, graduate students a lot. Um, is that, was that prior to 2010 or was this? Yes, it, it was, was. Prior. okay, so that's why, okay. Because, I mean, I guess these are not all under residence life control. These right. are, you know, so that this, in terms of providing additional student housing, this is public and private housing that attracts students. And Tribe Square and One Tribe Place, right, are the only two that are managed by um, college. At Richmond Hall. Oh, yeah. is that what it's called? Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> the, 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 um, obviously no okay. donor has stood up yet for the <laughs> un, un named. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And there was, there was discussion about Midtown Row, especially about being, about excluding non-students. Mm -hmm. And so they're being very cautious about, you know, how, how they're marketing that. Yeah, especially with the age uh, issue. So. There are going to be some numbers there. We'll have to see how that, you know, mm -hmm. who ends up signing leases there. I guess. I was put student. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and Richmond Hall is, I think everybody expects, and it was certainly built this way, is a short term. That's yes. a stopgap, yes. right? It has a time limit on it, 10 years. Yeah.
comments on that page? This is just a list of the commercial. I got most of it. Um, it's copy editing, but Chickafil, I, I just, I love it because when my father <laughs> first came <laughs> south and saw a Chick-fil-A, he kept calling it Chickafil, yeah. and it just still cracks me up. But anyway, it's, it's the 80s. <laughs> That's to how me. they look it up on the web. Wait, really? <laughs> Is their official name Chickafil? It's not Chick-fil-A. Uh -huh. Really? Okay. I don't know. Look I don't know about that. Look it up, Nia. Okay, well, I'm, I'm endlessly amused. Okay, well, actually, I, since we have internet here, it says Chick fil A on Richmond Road, 249. Well, we need to get to, bottom, to the bottom of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be glad to tell my father that he's not completely out to lunch. My dislike say it looked absolutely right, so I didn't, yeah. I didn't I think notice. I we can it. add an A on there for that much. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Is I tried to capture everything that I could think of. Um, justified being kept out of the triangle building area is that because they were newer. I'm sorry. Right next to Lucky's. Uh huh. Justified bakery. Mm -hmm. it, j it just says Rick's and and Lucky's, so I thought they could be added okay. to it. So I think I see the Hitchens building, um, Sakal's building fit in there somewhere, and is it one of the same building in uh, um, Yeah, I tried to Rose. list not every business that's been in, located in there since the last time. comp plan. Yep. 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 The last. And this one's particularly painful to say, but Oishi has gone out of business, I believe, and, and isn't in that location anymore. I believe you're mistaken. The door that says, come and see me. <laughs> really? Well, I haven't been back in a little while. I walked by it last night, so. Yeah, okay. They're, they're having a soft still reopening hope. this weekend. Okay. That's exciting. Plan. All right. They, uh, Motion to adjourn right now. Yeah. <laughs> they had some point of sale systems, as, as they told me. and That's great. Yeah, the rumor was they were full closed. Yeah. Glad to hear it. Let's keep them in. Long point of sale system. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, they were, they were getting their alarms and everything checked out this week. Okay, wonderful. Great. That's great. Then the area I highlighted in the last paragraph on that. That makes sense. I added by the William and Mary Real Estate Foundation. Endowment Association, other state owned entities. Andy had a question that that's not clear. We can look at um. it's well, just I mean, that's, isn't that what the ARB does? Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I don't I mean, know if this paragraph it, actually adds any, I skipped over this one, I guess. I don't know if this paragraph adds anything useful to the, to the chapter, simply because it could say the City Architectural Review Board does closely review the design of any proposed building by the Real Estate Foundation and whatever else. The non-state, yeah. So, you know, it, it, I, I might scratch should and make it say does, or I'd be tempted just to delete the paragraph because it's, understood by the people that are involved and if we're looking for ways to kind of dial back the adversarial quality um, or uh, that's not the right word but the the um, any hint of an adversarial relationship so take it out I'm okay with it. I'd be tempted I mean unless yeah, other it, people does, think yeah, it, no. it doesn't say anything okay. well I, I I think it I think it is somewhat relevant because it gives the opportunity to distinguish between 
Um, while the, the city's architectural review board does not mm. uh, have the ability to comment on the state-owned property, it is active in the uh, review of the foundation yeah. projects. That, that may be a distinction worth making. Yeah, that's a nuance that the general public may not understand. No, I'm sure you're right. Yeah. So, so maybe combine both of those comments, yours, and that the, the ARB does closely review line of the properties are from these subsets of the William Ferry sphere, but yeah. then or get rid of the last part about and demolition stuff because I mean that's a projects as they are proposed, whether it's a renovation or whether it's a demolition or whether it's an expansion. I mean, it, all those things are reviewed. Well, you know, we're, and you know, we're, um, no, sorry, I take it back. Sorry. Yeah, I agree. You could say something like should continue and, 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 and then the distinction about the I think the just, I think does rather than should, because should makes it sound like it's not already happening, right? It makes it sound as though there's a, there's a world in which that might not happen. Just saying does. This is, as Greg points out, to make, uh, to make it clear to the public at large that because the college is a state institution and the state, the city does not have jurisdiction over the state, um, it doesn't look at a lot of things, but it does look at X, Y, and Z. And X, Y, and Z is yeah. nicely I've massaged it. I think I can okay. Now we have traffic and parking. Comments on that? <clears throat> I think this is just another opportunity to, uh, and probably just belongs under recommendations, um, to emphasize the, not just the opportunity, the need to collaborate between these two parking studies. <laughs> um, uh, that's just essential. And it's the same, sorry, I just I skimmed it too quickly. Isn't it the same? I thought it was the same consultant. Oh, mm -hmm. It is the same consultant. Yeah. yeah, okay. It shouldn't be difficult. Well, and that language is already in here. I mean, maybe this doesn't need to change. Maybe it just needs to be refined a little bit, but the city and the university should work closely together on future projects concerning traffic and parking. Your idea of adding it as a recommendation? Well, I, yeah, I, I think we've got to think about the recommendations in the context of this discussion. Sure. Um, yeah. Okay, never mind. It's already in the recommendations. <laughs> yeah. <We're still> <laughs> yep. Pedestrian and bike facilities, I just updated it and carried over ones that uh, hadn't been processed yet and but that are in like the CIP. Comments on this? Bikes and pedestrians. Do we get anything going up Mill Neck Road? Is there a discussion on that? Well, that's kind of in structure. Okay. That's a city street, not a. Okay. So, uh, uh, the, last, the middle bullet under facilities, uh, 
connection needs to be made at the north end of Treyburn <clears throat> at Ironbound intersection. Um, that's actually okay. an intersection that I've, I've, I've walked through many times because we go to the baseball, go like park there, go to the high street for dinner, walk back to the baseball. And this sidewalk, this crosswalk, what's missing there? A bike lane? Is that what also needs a connection? What's missing there? I think Reed had it in there for the bike. I'll check on that. Getting ready to do that section that's phase two of uh, Ironbound Road too. And this says even a button to push that I want the crosswalk to come, come with my right. hand. What's missing there? I'll check on that. Over to the Kirk Foundation. Andy rewrote that first paragraph, inspired by Reverend W. A. R. John D. Rockefeller Jr. began the restoration and reconstruction of Virginia Capitol in 1926. Since then, the 301-acre restored city and museum, Tony Williamsburg Foundation, has attracted more than 53 million. It's a little more concise, and, and it does remove. I, I, I also had some misgivings about the, the decline um, in 1780. Yep. Um, so I, I think that's good. I, m I'm just wordsmithing, but I would say Rockefeller deserves an enormous amount of credit, but I would say he began funding the restoration and reconstruction. Uh, he didn't actually undertake all that much. <laughs> There's a picture of him holding a brick, so I think he no other comments Collins quote there can you just block that or make it so it's obvious that it's a that it's Sorry. a quote Oh, is that on that, this page? That lengthy, page? that lengthy quote from Colin. Um, I, I presume that's a quote, right? As described, you says as described by Colin Campbell. It's and clearly it, a quote, yeah, because yeah, he so keeps it saying ends, it our. Ends in a quote. Well, that's a quote from Rock. Like from started. that's from Roosevelt. Oh, oh sorry. He's yeah, quoting Roosevelt. It. It's a quote within a quote, right? So that should be blocked. Well, and I think also it should read former President Colin Campbell. Uh, yes, yeah. he's, he's not and won't be next year, but. Current president. Not coming back? <laughs> oh, okay. It's just. Moving on. Yeah. I mean, in fact, yeah. It, um, uh, it may, it may seem, it may seem like an editorial gesture to have a quote from Colin in here five years on. So I might just, um, you know what would be, what we could do to, if you want to keep that in, because I think it's a nice, it's a really nice summary um, of what's important. Maybe there's a way to um, say, as described in a Colonial Williamsburg, um, I assume this is from an annual report or something, just to take, take the authorship out of it. Find find a way to keep it in because I think it is a nice it's nicely written, um, but if it just becomes a statement from an annual report, then it doesn't seem like it's an implied uh, editorial comment about about leadership. Okay, that sounds like it's probably the introduction. One of the annual reports. Yeah, yeah that's sure what it sounds like. Um, there are a few other points in here where it's it's sort of a historic document rather than a current one, and I think the very next paragraph is like that too. Um, you know, the 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 mission statement has been rewritten, and I think that rather than trying to finesse the 2012 paragraph. It's tempting to simply remove that. 
I don't know that it adds anything to the document to leave it in. A version of it is still true, but again, I think you just want to tread carefully. Pictures out only because it was either text in the ocean. Yeah, there was a there were one or two points, and I think they're both in this section where the picture actually obscured yep. some of the texts. I think that's just a formatting mm -hmm. issue, but. have to be careful when we change the format. Oh, I, don't get me started. I spent the whole morning wrestling with the PDF. Very frustrating. Thing you see on that page, 12? So is the museum still going to open this year or is it Ooh, do we have that in here do we have yeah, the dates the opening this is fall 2019 i think it's 20 i think it's more spring 2020 now just um ron will um i won't answer that okay um <laughs> i'll, I'll see i'll see you i mean it's a construction project it right is, yeah, so but i thought i thought they had pushed it they might have they might have adjusted the official schedule because this was um, five years ago that they were talking about that so Carolyn, so did you remove okay. pictures from this chapter yes. as I a whole? I just took the pictures out because it was easier to read. Okay. In so the right PowerPoint. Over. So okay. The pictures in there eventually. But okay. Oh, support. I'll put them back in. Purposes, they're, they're still. I, I, I like the semicircle one right here. So yep. I'll I'll schedule. So. I, I don't think they've actually. Oh yeah. Do you want me to check on the date of the that museum was. opening? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, I you know I think some things are going to start to open um, before the end of the year. And the fall extends into December. I'll just remind everybody. So, um, uh, maybe there's a way. I mean, it's it's not a bad thought. Maybe there's a way to just be vague about that. Uh, in a way, it doesn't matter. By the time this document is in use, it'll be in the past. Um, to just take out that part of the sentence altogether. Yeah, that's exactly right. End the sentence at Art Museums of Colonial Williamsburg. Period. Right. We don't need to say when it's scheduled to open. And for, um, so I think, so just, just as, um, from Justin's comment about planning issues, t that change of title should carry over to this area as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, under architectural character, my only question was, I wasn't exactly sure what's meant by, um, well, the stewardship of the historic area is unmatched. The continued disposition of properties surrounding the historic area makes the city's role in protecting its setting even more important. Is, is that just trying to say there are properties that surround the historic area that we need to be careful with? Um, I just didn't understand what was meant by disposition. That's what I think it's meant to say. Yeah, I was, I was kind of thinking viewscape. 
that's the concept that's I think informing this. Maybe it's just the the um, uh, maybe the sentence needs to read the um, holding of properties in private by private. Um, uh, she, I think I know what's intended. It's just the sentence isn't quite isn't really there right now. Um, basically, what we're trying to what I think the document is trying to say is the foundation stewardship of the historic area is great, but there are uh, private property owners surrounding the historic area. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how to say it. Just right now, that sentence is is a, is a struggle. A little section um, about the city's changes near the Colonial Williamsburg area. This isn't a city change, but the site plan review committee met this morning about um, the changes going into the P3 lot. And so I thought that might be wise to just mention those as a proposed development coming down the line. I got it. Well, the stewardship is unmatched. The private ownership of properties surrounding the historic area makes the city's role in protecting its yeah. setting even more important. I think that's the just re replace disposition with private ownership, right? No, 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 that's great. Yeah. And see, I was interpreting disposition uh, to deal with the, the, the selling off of some of those. That's what parcels. I. That's what I thought it was referring to too. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's that's the way yeah, I read it. So, right. Situation. Exactly. So clearly, that needs to be addressed if we're all reading it sort of differently. Yeah. And, and, and which way do we want to emphasize it? Well, I think I don't think we have to talk about it as something that's elastic or fluid. If we just say the private ownership of property surrounding the historic area, and whether that private ownership is um, changing. Uh, well, I think here we're making a distinction between the museum ownership, foundation ownership, and other, right? Because we're saying the foundation's a great steward. Yeah, so I, I'm just saying we need to be, because, you know, we're confused by what this says yeah. now, so, so we just yeah. need to be real clear about which, you know, CW property versus other private owners. Yeah. yeah. And protecting its selling even now, more important. And again, we've got the ARB, uh, a sense sort of saying the ARB needs to do what I presume it's already doing. What they are doing, yes. The ARB doing. So, again, works closely with, yeah, not needs works to, but works continue, closely. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah so I agree. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so was that clear? I think the suggestion was delete needs to and make work works. Right? It's just... This is happening. The reference to Chapter 10, um, making proposals, that's that's Chapter 10 of the prior comp plan, right? So to make it consistent, I mean, what of, of those proposals, uh, I mean, what what's happened in the, in the time since 
the last plan was enacted. I mean, is that, and is our current plan, is, is current chapter 10 going to have that same, uh, or is, is, yeah, we'll, well whichever chapter number on that. Okay, yeah, but I mean, or whichever the, the commercial and economic development. I'm just I'm saying for uh, it, is whatever that current chapter is going to be in the current in, in the plan that we're working on now. Is it still going to propose zoning changes? Mm -hmm. Are we are in our current the, in the plan that we're working on right this today? This commercial and economic development. Are we going to be proposing zoning changes for Merchant Square in that mm -hmm. in that chapter as they did five years ago? We haven't written it yet, but I well, no, think but I'm, I'm just saying this not so much maybe on the north side, but on the south side, from what I've heard from the commission, the block on Prince George Street, Henry, Scotland. So Nassau, I think I heard from the commission, didn't want townhomes or condos or development on that block that you thought it was more important to focus on other side of Merchant Square, which includes six parking lot, possibly. That, that's what I remember the commission talking about when we were discussing that chapter. So I plan to write that into that chapter. I think what James is saying point. is we just need to make sure that this sentence reflects present right. reality. Right. Right? So maybe it's yeah. as simple as deleting uh, north and, um, but whatever need to highlight that sentence to make sure that it yeah, reflects that's what we do with the yeah, right. yeah. I think, you know, I think that we should be able to catch that quickly when we go through the next revisions because my impression is that we're no longer going to have a one ch chapter doing commercial and economic development. Economic development is separated into its own. So obvious to us that highlighted in your, yep. live, in your live version. And updated the downtown parking study, like the major points from the study. not be chapter eight. <laughs> <clears throat> then I got down to recommendations for both. So just backing up to the traffic and parking, I know it's going to be dealt with more fully in another part mm -hmm. of the place, okay. but going back to Caleb's uh, comment of, you know, saw Goodman Square six or nine months ago. It then got pulled. It's back on our agendas. Right. It's going through the Tourism Development Fund for monies and all that sort of stuff. So while what's there is, um, might, might it be useful to have something that more explicitly talks about the idea that um, Being innovative with the parking, you know, so that this idea that we're going to roll out something that removes parking isn't a surprise, <laughs> you know, because I mean, this just seems like a, a standard thing about parking. We need to really deal with parking technologies or, on, you know, that we need parking, we need parking to support these other things, but then as this is being written, potentially 40 parking spaces are taken away. So, but this parking study actually said we could support that given out what we were otherwise what we have for parking and how we utilize the parking. Maybe something that's about innovative uses of parking or distributions of parking might support the other work that we're doing. Making sure people understand where the parking is. Right, 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 right. Yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Educating. I added some, something like that, you know. Um, so then the recommendations um, for William and Mary. Um, I can't read a paper re in 
recent times where at least, you know, I've seen in the Washington Post, I've seen in the Wall Street Journal, yes, that scooters are taking over the universe. <laughs> yeah. so, and I have actually been hit by a scooter. Um, <laughs> well, it, by, it, uh, literally, uh, last week in DC I'm walking, a scooter hits a man who was so mad at the scooter, he shoved the man in the scooter at me. <laughs> wow. okay. Wow. Boomerang scooter. Um, so at any rate, um, I, bikes, I think everyone knows how to ride a bike better than they know how to ride a scooter right now, so I'm not really sure. The, uh, <laughs> the reason scooter's in there is the General Assembly said each jurisdiction has to come up with a scooter ordinance before January oh. of next year. Okay, cool. Okay. Or they are, will be allowed everywhere January of next year in your but didn't, didn't we do it with segways seven years ago or eight years ago? Yeah. <laughs> Surely that same thinking can govern a scooter policy. But so, so maybe we need to have something that's more defined that the we will work with the university to develop our alternative mode of transportation policies kind of thing where because this to me looks yeah. like we're we're proposing that we are wanting active scooters flopped all over town term because you can leave them you just well I think you know this is this is one of these points and I think transportation generally along with housing um, is another place where the, the city and, the, and the, the university are are have nicely aligned interests which is to say it's in the city's interests and the colleges to enable students to get from their housing wherever it is to uh, classrooms but also to get to restaurants to get to the historic area to all, do all these things safely so uh, a scooter program should one emerge on campus um, will have an impact on transportation for everybody throughout the city because those scooters won't you know oh, the batteries won't yeah. turn off at the at jamestown road so um I, i'm not i don't think i'm adding anything to the discussion except to reinforce that this is this is another place where we can identify a, a um, right. I mean, and I, I think, and I, I, cooperation. I mean, it's, a, it's a cooperative point, but it's a point that to me is not only the obvious things of like public safety, because most people who are riding scooters want to ride them on the sidewalk and on the street, but it is a, a vehicle. Yeah. Um, but it's also a community character piece because sure. a beautified city does not have scooters laying all over the place, which <laughs> they are. I mean, I was in yeah, Cincinnati on business last month. They're just all over the place. They're all over. Do you see? I mean, they just flopped. If a bicycle. Yeah you have to actually bring back to that bike share rack and mm -hmm. then there's a bike rack of bikes and so it's a very different kind of thing. So I just think we need to think about how we recommend something that includes that so or just okay. Also you gotta think about on Oh and, uh, yeah yeah. I know. Right. Yeah. I know. I mean it's not Well if the, 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 the yeah that's a that's a problem for the foundation to solve, but also um, well maybe not. I mean maybe no, the public streets, streets. streets. Yeah. but on the sidewalks, oh. right? Yeah. And the sidewalk is where there are problems. There's much yeah. less a problem on the public streets than they are, you know, buzzing down in front of the Prentice store or something. Um, the the challenge with the segways and the reason that the foundation struggled with segways was because they were classified as a mobility device, and so if that happens mm -hmm. with scooters, that changes the calculation um, significantly. And, and, and we have on campus students and faculty who use segways as a mobility device. Mm -hmm. And that's a very different concept than a device that can be a mobility device, but as a fun riding device. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. obviously, that's different. Capture there. But anyway, this, I guess, that's a, if we have to do something by January of next year or in the next six months, what it, Six months or a year and a half? something before January. Before this January. 2020. Holy smokes. Okay, so then that will It'll be... It'll be done before this, probably. So, so then maybe... Yeah. Want to take it out? Take Scooter take, out? Take yeah. out Scooter or just take it out? If that's something that we're going to have to be doing in the fall, Christine, no doubt, is working up draft language yeah. for us at some future... I just wrote something. Work with the university to investigate future modes of transportation. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, that's we, great. That's yeah, I mean, we got the zip cars, we got zip cars, and things around. like that. It's five Monorail years, three years from now that we don't know about. Hoverboards. 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 Um, I think monorail. I don't know why. Well, you've got, you've got the motorized bicycles now. 
Oh, they've been uh, they allowed, allowed, allowed yeah. up and down to Gloucester Street. It's a motorized vehicle. Yeah, they um, are. Um, I mean, I don't. But I, you can't drive a motorcycle up to Gloucester Street in the middle of the day. No, but I know people who fake pedal to make it that third. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you realize you're, not, you're going 20 miles an hour. You're not mm -hmm. going with that. But anyway. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah. The uh, Colonial Williamsburg section there, I think that's Palace Farms, right? Well, we just, I just want to oh, maybe yeah, wrap up William and Mary first. Okay, so sorry. many of these can be summarized by basically providing um, transportation infrastructure, uh, principally sidewalks, but also a bike path, uh, and then parking is sort of in that category too. But in our earlier discussion, we were talking about a, an additional recommendation that spoke to. Um, I've forgotten what we were focused on, but uh, more active collaboration between decision makers at the college and decision makers in the city, whether it's a member of this body or a member of council or, or a member of city staff. I think something that articulates that specifically uh, is, is probably needed here. And something that focuses on land use. I mean, we're not talking about, I, I don't know, we, we want to stay focused on, on what we're here to do, but. Um, I think that'd be worth adding a bullet point. That that. Um, and I think it, for me, when when we were talking about that half an hour ago, to me, I mean, I think that he and others can work on developing this list of places that we know would be helpful. Because I mean, I think that while a buildings committee or a grounds committee dealing with beautification across the city kind of thing, mm -hmm. having representation on that would be obvious from some of the hats that we wear. I think that with regard to some of the parts of you know, the economic development and chamber of commerce and then the activities of the college, this idea of having more of a omnibus calendar for you know, planning events and things like that would be helpful. And this, there is that kind of a committee on campus and there are other committees in the domain that work on those things. So, so it's not all, it's not, not only us. I mean, no, there's other areas where there are standing committees that having cross membership would be helpful. Everyone just thinking my domain and not bumping against each other. Um, so in terms of what we do get involved in, I, I think housing, both affordable housing and student housing, to the extent that those are different things. Um, transportation, and that's really covered in here. Tr transportation infrastructure is nicely covered. Uh, but those two things above all um, are, are places where we have something to contribute to a discussion with the college. And we need the college's input and cooperation on solving these things that we've identified as problems. Sort of nitpicky, but maybe the third bullet point we could change the to the university should construct a sidewalk or something like that. I feel like needs to is yeah. maybe more combative than we intended to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, something that puts those items under the uh, general umbrella of improving student um, uh, circulation through the city, um, and that can happen through the following. section and this is the fir this is the first time we've seen this so this, yes. you know this yeah. is our first draft yes. this is second draft you know so yeah on to the foundation the second bullet uh -huh. I wonder if we should add the governors and property to that list as well because I think it's very strategically related to downtown mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And so the, the first bullet, um, I sit as our representative on the Tourism Development Fund. I mean, had that body is the we had I guess, five or six distinct presentations from the foundation. Um, Goodwin Plaza was the big one, but the other ones dealt with like getting Wi-Fi, updating bathrooms, doing signage, doing streets. I mean, I, I guess as a generic umbrella, because it's this is a 
broader, that, that's fine, but I have a feeling like we're actually, I, I feel, it feels a little duplicit that we're actually working on projects. We know this isn't coming out until 2020, or that it eventually fully be paid, but we're listing them as the things. Um, or is that just something that has to be done continuously over a 10-year period, so it, it does need to be there, even if we're currently working on some of those issues right now? Yeah, and I took that information basically from the PowerPoint presentation they gave us in February as okay. the stuff they were doing. But well, I mean, well, maybe it's just a you know, question of phrasing. Continue to update infrastructure in the historic area in downtown. I know yeah. what to say it is ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you're right. Again, if I if you think about a cynical reader um, looking at it, I'd say, well, you know, yeah, the historic area is crumbling, right? Which is not, of course, what's intended and, no. and not reality. Yeah. But so, continuing to update infrastructure um, okay. after that. There are quite a few bathrooms that are being worked on too. You might just include that. Mm. Hmm. This might seem a little odd. Um, I think about the when they're talking about the stores in Merchant Square and such. And I don't know how it would be done, so this is a, a great informal setting, I guess, just to talk about it. Making sure that the, the relevance to the locals is still very much at focus for Merchant Square. Things like uh, the farmer's market are tremendous at pulling the locals down there. And um, if it would be an absolute travesty if, if, if Merchant Square filled up with nothing but uh, I'll say catalog stores and corporate stores and corporate restaurants and I'm not suggesting that Colonial Williamsburg would do that but uh, I, I wonder if if there's some language that might put in there that, that, that deals with making sure that it's uh, an anchor for visitors and traditional local residents as well as engaging the college students and, and the activities and event, events and stores um, attract a cross-section of the community as opposed to just one demographic of visitors or such. So maybe the third bullet point could be expanded to, to make that point because I think that's, that's certainly something we want to encourage. There's also, I, I like that idea and maybe that could help reiterate it, but I do like the idea of having a even an additional bullet that talks about some of Greg's other points about the activities, whether it's farmers markets or bees on Prince George Street and things like that that do attract locals in addition to just make it a space that locals want to walk to or drive to. And if all if all we do is own the city street and they control everything that that happens next to it, then I think we've we've missed something there. So I'm sure that in the entire community, I think it's great. I, I do think we want to be a little bit careful and presume to have the city be an advisor to our commercial property uh, to make suggestions about the kind of tenants that they would put in, right? I agree. So it's just that um, any any bullet that speaks to that, I think, just has to do it thoughtfully and in ways that don't seem like we're trying to stick our nose into places that we wouldn't ordinarily stick our nose, right? Uh, right. I think the work with language that's now sort of echoed from the top down yeah. helps sort of Yeah. That's a good point to be careful in our wording. Yeah. I mean, if we just tagged on at the end of that. Uh, if we tagged on it at the end of uh, Occupy oh, by Benz sense. and attract um, community-oriented events to Duke of Gloucester Street. Well, maybe one way to do it is sort of like with the first bullet, continue to attract community-oriented events, right. right? Which is to say, because the implication too could be, again, thinking of a cynical reader, the implication could be things aren't happening right now, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that's, a, that's an implicit, if not explicit, criticism. We have already changed all of those to continue. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But the, but the language that's there about filling vacancies speaks to what Jeff's saying about, about CW selecting its own tenants. Yeah. And so I wonder about just tweaking that, um, making it a little less specific.
work with the foundation on filling vacancies and merchants. We have an economic development authority. Right. Yeah, well, well, let's do that. that. So I, th I, th that's I think true. that's that's a relevant thing to, to say. Sure. But maybe the, maybe the point is just to specifics say from it. Merchant Square in general, because these might be empty today in three yeah. years. From yeah. Now. Yeah, and maybe it's true. continue to assist the foundation filling vacancies. Right. Sounds more cooperative. I want to make sure we're careful about language, that's all. Yep. Uh, I didn't, what was that, what's that fourth bullet about? They talked about expansion on the, especially on the south side on. Oh, sorry, line. sorry. I was focused on, yeah, gotcha. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were looking at, if I remember the commission saying expansion of Merchant Square is more appropriate probably in the next five years on the south side of Merchant Square, six parking lot, than it would be on the north side in that other block that didn't really want right. development. Okay. We didn't want development there first. We wanted it on the... Yeah, should we say development to the south of Merchant Square rather than, I don't know, expansion of Merchant Square? Yep. I just, I just sort of yeah. imagine this organism yeah. <laughs> yeah. growing to... You're right, you're to right. uh, I, think, I think that that captures what we're actually talking about is this, the property the south of Merchant Square. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, had it I don't think anyone, capitalists here, anyone outside this room, envisioned that. Which is, I think we all were in agreement with that, that P6 lot business. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether it's here or whether it's an economic development, and I was scooting back to the um, community character chapter, because it really, but I think that part of Greg's comments and intersecting with some of my thoughts, and I think probably Justin's was of this community aspect nature, and other conversations that I've had, like with EDA and stuff like that, and culture fix folks, I mean, this idea of having more, you know, us supporting the foundations on foundation properties, of having these different activities, like not having, or continuing to have summer breeze when it's 100 degree heat index, fine, but maybe <laughs> having it in October when it's nice, you know, <laughs> um, or, you know, those kinds of things that are, would draw, you know, and, and in the swing seasons of April or October, we're all still here, there's fewer tourists, so by de facto, the 200 to 500 people sitting there are going to be more of us, you know, that, how, I don't know where that fits in, but I think that that kind of language needs to be somewhere. It might be in the economic development, it might be in you know, special events or whatever, but that fits somewhere in this place for me with how the city and the foundation interacts and I'll interacts look at for the community. Element and I'll look at the commercial. Okay. Commercial section talks about Merchant Square okay. specifically, and that may be the appropriate place okay, to put perfect. that. And if not, I'll add something. I'll add it in both spots. Right. Just soften it. Okay. Yeah, I, and I, I think there are probably places f for the city to make helpful suggestions like that. Um, we ought to think about how that happens in a comprehensive plan document. Um, you know, if we're, if we're talking about our events, then what can the city offer um, to, to enable those events to continue to be successful, to be even more successful than they are? Is, is the way that I'd like to be thinking about that. Um, I think the other thing is, um, as we think about uh, a, a, a amending or a tweaking the recommendations for the college, I think again emphasizing collaborative quality of, of the recommendations that we're making for the for CW. Um, and and one bullet that's not on here. Um, I guess it's sort of mentioned in updating infrastructure, but um, the, 
the city, the city improving wayfinding outside the historic area would be of great benefit to Colonial Williamsburg. So that's something that probably should be undertaken again in collaboration with the foundation. Um, so, uh, you know, the, I guess it doesn't say wayfinding, it just says signage. Um, but we've already identified wayfinding as a need. I, I've now, it's been two hours, so I've forgotten actually what section that was in, but um, that's another opportunity for collaboration, I think, and one where the city has something to offer the foundation. Um, and as we think about just making the language here cooperative and collaborative, I think um, something about wayfinding maybe belongs in the recommendations. It's not a recommendation for the foundation to do, it's a recommendation for the city to do, again, in consultation with um, decision makers at the foundation. What Elaine had to say was very much on, on point regarding the, the city and encouraging events to go into October and things, which is uh, one of the things that I believe we did do because they had asked for uh, a couple of months and we said, no, let's extend it longer. And, and when we look at things like that and the food truck policy and, and those things, I think that's, that's a great way to... Uh, be cooperative and supportive yeah. uh, in this. So I think we're doing it, and I, I think we're on track with that. So yeah, and, and I think for me also, I, I, I guess I have a little um, interest in this fitting somewhere in the comp plan, even though it may be a little bit seeming out of the wheelhouse, because the tourism development fund. I mean, we have two million to give out this year. We're going to have two million. Two that next year. I mean, the people who are coming forward to ask for these funds are coming to do things in cooperation with the foundation or the city or the college. Mm -hmm. And if it's part of the comp plan that we actually encourage mm -hmm. these kinds of activities, then it actually makes it easier for the vote, you know, the people who get to vote on these committees or work through the committees, like, oh, well, and this is in concert with what the city wants, mm -hmm. even though it doesn't seem to fit into a direct statute line code or something yeah, that might yeah. be found. But yeah. if, it's, if that, if that, you know, we're going to then say, okay, well, we, we should we should give these two hundred thousand dollars to support you know tents for the six weeks of October, the middle yeah. of November, because it's actually part of this other thing. So I think it should fit somewhere, yeah. um, and then it also supports these other things like the money side of a well, whole other committee. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's something like support ongoing expansion of citywide events through. I don't think you want to come right out and say through through adjusting, amending uh, regulations as needed, but, but something that speaks to what the city can do to enable these events to expand, be more successful, um, support city residents, this is something we've been discussing, in addition to, uh, I bet there's a, I bet we can come up with Being mindful as, as ordinances are drafted to yeah. encourage yeah. and facilitate Consistent with responsible land use policy, but it does it does also I think, require for those things to be effective, uh, active collaboration. Mm -hmm. I would finish by saying that I know. Foundation section also, and I'm going to vote. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. great. Yeah. great. So, will you? And I'll pass those on to the commission <laughs> once I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so digging back to finding my agenda, since so we're at the end of chapter nine. Um, now my have more discussion, I believe, but I, I think we're probably pretty good for that. And um, I assume our, our friends in the room here are fine. They're here. Okay. So then um, the final bullet point is, is adjournment, but is it? I have one question okay. for the commission. We are drafting library and school section. And we want to know if the commission would like that to be under institutions and we would have public and private institutions. 
prefer the schools to be and the library to be under a separate chapter. Right now, they're currently under infrastructure. And <laughs> we think it needs to be pulled out of infrastructure because if I was going to go look for schools, I would not go to infrastructure to find Sewers, it. Sewers, streets, schools. Right. Okay, so, okay, so um, and I wasn't actually calling to adjourn. I was actually going to call for additional business, so yeah. yes. Um, and I also had a question about next week's meeting. But so I think when you're saying institutions and public and private institutions, what we were dealing with today were public and private institutions. So today we were dealing with the, I call it the private institutions, the seminary and the foundation. I could rename the chapter institutions and put public and private and then list all four in there, but do public do private and then public, or we could just create another chapter for them and call them, this would be private, the public ones would be the school. But William and Mary is not a private institution, it's a public institution, that's. I need to. Would you, could you actually integrate it? I mean, it seems that's like. That's what I'm saying. I yeah, would, but I mean, it, it seems like that would be a lot a more big, challenging than. Chapter. Than, Prefer them as their own chapter. I heard, yeah, I'd rather. Easier I mean, to find wayfinding lawyers. Library, library and schools seems like whole, there's whole different animals. Yeah. It's, it's, different. Different. it's it's one of the most important things we have in our community. Yeah. Right. Um, so you okay have its with own creating chapter. another chapter? Oh yeah. yeah, I think so. Okay. And I think that a chapter that's, I think that what we're saying is a chapter that's not like obliquely public institutions, but. Library and school, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Something like when you when you go to the chapter pages, you know what you're looking for, right? Yeah. Yep. Like there was an infrastructure before. I hadn't really picked that. Yeah, that's kind of odd. <laughs> Various. Yeah. And then, okay, so so and so this was this this meeting was in lieu of the fact that we didn't have any uh, work to do as a hearing, a, a public hearing, and we have our regular work session next. Wednesday. To try and get you to the library and school. And, and so that's what's going to be the a potential update of when we did the Isn't it Parks wow. too? Wow. Mm -hmm. Park too. Parks as well. Uh, parks is its own separate chapter. Yeah. Okay. okay. We're pulling that out of infrastructure. Oh, that was wow. awesome. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of infrastructure. Yeah, yeah it's too much. It's a weird one to have infrastructure as well. I mean, I'm thinking of the, the streets and the right. That's infrastructure there are streets, <laughs> sidewalks. Uh, yeah. Water, sewer, yeah. EMPs, those kind of things. Infrastructure. Schools. <laughs> <laughs> get to it, it's going to be really yeah. short because we're pulling all this stuff that's, out. That's, yeah. Yeah. We just think it'll be easier to, to find yeah. those sections. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Especially the other ones, the schools and other things have their constituencies that are interested in them. Okay. Anything else for today? Okay. Well, then we'll adjourn. We meet back again on Wednesday next week, 4 o'clock, for our Work session 15. That's right. Cool. Wow. Thank you. Thank you.